Infinity War, but I suspect Mr Claw wasn't in that. Great to have your company. See you next time on The Chase Australia. Tonight in 7 News, a man shot and tasered by police after two carjackings and a four-car pile-up at Oxley. Stay at home, an extraordinary Easter shutdown. The police blitz on highways, borders and motorways to keep people away from holiday hotspots. The rescue plan for struggling Queensland tenants and landlords to get them through the COVID crisis. The NRL to restart the rugby league season on May the 28th. A life lived to the full. A brave Brisbane dad pays tribute to his son after a shark attack off Gladstone. A rush on Easter seafood at a social distance as church services prepare to go online. And how to save on your insurance while you're stuck at home. Live from Brisbane, 7 News with Sharon Gadella and Max Butcher. Good evening. A man has been shot multiple times by police in Oxley after stealing cars at Knife Point and running down a young shopper. Police say they were forced to shoot after the offender ran at an officer with a knife. Picking up a few items before work, this woman returns to her car and starts to reverse when she's confronted by a man with a knife who forces her out of the vehicle. He's just grabbing my coffee to go to the work, so he just literally came and um, shot and uh, swearing and said, uh, get up from the car. I just jumped out from, and I just left my bag, my phone, everything. A customer in his 20s runs to help, but he's mowed down. Oh, he's a quite young boy. I feel so bad for him. But the offender doesn't stop, ramming her blue sedan into a white Mercedes. He tries to steal it before taking off. I've seen a lot of smoke and a lot of fuel coming from the car. He ran down Oxley Station Road, but was cornered by police near a park. The officer attempted to negotiate with the man uh, I understand that he discharged a taser. The man wouldn't back down. The officer forced to fire several shots, hitting him in the torso. The man is alive, but in a very serious condition. And it is a last resort when police will use a firearm. This is a police officer's worst nightmare. The drama started here, outside Oxley Village. The offender was at the wheel of this stolen Camry when he crashed up the back of the SUV before taking off on foot to Foodworks just 50 metres down the road. Jumped out of the car, he was waving his arms everywhere, thinking it was blaming the other guy for the accident. That triggered a terrifying series of events that ended with gunfire. Tonight, the officer who fired those shots is being questioned by the Ethical Standards Command. He is an experienced senior constable from the Centenary Road Policing Command who was responding to this crime spree. We now understand he fired three shots after his taser didn't work and that man refused to back down with that knife. He uh, is now being, as I said, questioned by the Ethical Standards Command as his colleagues with metal detectors and police dogs look through this park for those bullet casings that will form part of this investigation. It is now the second police shooting here in Brisbane in just four days after the shooting at Sunnybank Hills on Monday night and the fourth in Queensland in the past six weeks. The man in his 40s who was shot here today we understand is well known by police. He is tonight fighting for his life in hospital. If he survives he will be facing a string of serious charges including attempted murder. Mac Lyon reporting from Oxley. The coronavirus holiday crackdown is well underway, with police already out in force targeting those travelling without a valid reason. Borders have been further tightened, with all Queenslanders now needing a permit to return home. Easter, normally a time of forgiveness, but this year police will be in an unforgiving mood. We will be doing random audits and we will be checking to see whether people are compliant. Focusing on roads to holiday hotspots, licence plate recognition deployed to spot out-of-towners who will face fines. This is no time to be travelling. Particularly across the border. From midnight tomorrow, every person returning to Queensland will need a border pass. Do the right thing and stay in Queensland. You should be at your principal place of residence. And those who've come from a prescribed COVID-19 hotspot like Greater Sydney... You will be placed in 14 days quarantine. No exceptions. The crackdown extends from the roads now reaching the water with police actively patrolling ports and ferry terminals checking on everyone trying to access the holiday islands of Moreton Bay. Only permitted residents are allowed, but some 300 mainlanders are trying to game the system, changing their licence address to one on Stradbroke Island, dodging the ban. For those who are trying to find a loophole in the directive, be warned that police are on the island and will be enforcing the Chief Health Officer's directive. 
Overnight, a further 10 cases of coronavirus were recorded in Queensland, taking the total to 953, another small increase. Despite the fact that we've significantly increased testing, uh, we, did, we tested three th over 3,000 patients yesterday. But even as the curve flattens, the warning is to prepare for months of lockdowns. This is really, really hard for everyone. I don't underestimate what people are being asked to do. Including social distancing restrictions on gatherings, but it seems some get exemptions. A funeral in Mackay given permission for around 80 people to mourn an Indigenous elder. A lot of work has been put in place to provide that assistance so that a funeral can go ahead to mourn a very, very significant person. To grant 60 or 70 extra people at a funeral flies in the face of every message that's been communicated to Queenslanders. For now, the message the government is most keen to spread remains. Queenslanders, let's do the right thing. Stay in Queensland. Joel Dry, 7 News. More and more, it's looking like an invisible wall is being built around the Gold Coast. The only people allowed into the popular holiday spot will need to prove their visit's essential. It's the not-so-warm welcome to the Sunshine State, where even Queenslanders will have to explain why they should be allowed back home. This is not about trying to make people's lives difficult. This is about trying to save people's lives. And protecting communities over the border at risk of being bombarded by Queenslanders bound for their beaches. If we can't go there, which I'm not opposed to, then they shouldn't be able to leave either. Coming back into Queensland, they will still need to get a border pass. But adding to the confusion, anyone who tried to get a border pass this afternoon were told Queensland residents are not required to apply. North of the Gold Coast, you won't need a pass, but you will need a valid reason to head south on the M1. Your traditional holiday is simply not on. The city, famous for fun, now a fortress turning tourists away. Stay home and stay out of the Gold Coast. Roads, beaches and car parks closed. Police will also use drones fitted with loudspeakers to disperse any crowds as surf lifesavers issue a very different warning this Easter. Please stay away. Um, the beach is only for exercising. And completely closed at Surfers Paradise, Coolangatta and the Spit making these holidays... It's so hard to describe. On the Gold Coast, Amanda Abate, 7 News. So, Alex Lewis, what happens if you're caught on the other side of the border without a pass come Saturday? Well, Max, you will still be able to get home, but you will be sent away to apply for a border pass online. It only takes a few minutes. You can do it on your phone and all Queenslanders are eligible, but you will be asked where you've come from. And if that's a declared virus hotspot, you'll be forced to quarantine at home for 14 days. Thank you, Alex. New measures are being introduced to better protect landlords and renters in retail, commercial and residential properties. Land taxes will be waived and evictions will be prohibited for those facing financial hardship. Whether you own or rent... No one could have expected or predicted the scenario. For commercial, retail and residential landlords and tenants, a $400 million incentive could help. To support vulnerable tenants as well as giving property owners a fair go to. Land owners can apply for a three-month rebate on land tax and a three-month deferral if they rent out all or part of a property and at least one tenant can't pay normal rent or the landlord can't secure a tenant. They must pass on those savings to renters or if they can't lease their property, the savings must be used to pay off other debts. And you can't be evicted if your lease expires during the pandemic. Instead, it must be extended by six months. But if you can't afford the rent and you want to leave, you can. Tenants can now also refuse non-essential activities like inspections and those facing financial hardship. A break lease will be capped at the cost of one week's rent. So that we have got an economy to wake up after we have suppressed this pandemic. There will be exemptions for those suffering domestic or family violence. They will be able to upgrade security features to the property and they'll be able to do that without seeking approval first. A new government website has been launched with more answers and advice. Tom Hartley, 7 News. Rugby League has blown the whistle on the coronavirus lockdown, announcing the NRL season will kick off again on May 28th. It's the first major sporting code to break ranks and get back on the paddock despite the threat of the pandemic. 
The game's power brokers met at NRL headquarters trying to nut out a plan to get the game back up and running. After a four hour meeting, a date was set for a resumption. On behalf of the ARL Commission, I'm pleased to announce that um, we're planning a, a competition start on May 28th. The New South Wales government's done a fantastic job. So, you know, hopefully by the 28th of May, which is seven weeks away, that rate will be substantially less. Aside from kickoff on Thursday, May 28, there's uncertainty about the structure of the competition. Options include 13 more rounds for a 15 game regular season, a grand final in late October, and an Origin Series mid season. Broadcasters are pushing for a 22 round season that would see the competition stretch into November. We're leaning towards a, a competition structure that looks uh, more aligned with what we've currently got. But the Players Association was reluctant to house players in an isolation bubble scenario. That The government regulations won't require that, uh, but again the players are understanding the fact that there will be some tighter restrictions on them. But there are major stakeholders fuming at the way the NRL has handled discussions relating to the competition's resumption. Claims of financial mismanagement here at head office. A broadcast partner accusing the NRL of squandering millions of dollars on a bloated head office. Project Apollo has lift off for now. Michelle Bishop, 7 News. A Brisbane father is reflecting on a young life lived to the full after a shark killed his son off Gladstone. He says the attack was a freak event and thanked those who tried to save the young ranger's life. Peter Robert never imagined he'd lose his son. It was late in the evening when we got the call. I told us that Zach was involved in the shark attack. The 23-year-old ranger had been swimming around North West Island, cooling down after work. But unfortunately they were not able to save him. So of course that, from that point, um, your whole life, your whole world turned upside down. Peter met the rangers who tried to save him. Just wanted an opportunity to really thank them for what they did. He wants Zach to be remembered as a young man who lived his life to the fullest. And he'd come back to us and say, that was just the best day ever, Dad. Oh, I had the best night ever. And that was a familiar phrase that came out of our son's mouth. He'd studied at the Australian Maritime College in Tasmania, volunteered on a medical ship in Papua New Guinea and travelled the world with friends. And his approach to life and, and what he did was extraordinary. His close friends say this is where Zach wanted to spend his time. Finishing school, he went straight into work as a ranger, starting his career in Moreton Bay before heading north. And he was so looking forward to the role. He was so looking forward to this trip. Losing his life, doing what he loved. We need to reflect on some of the fantastic things that he did and the enthusiasm that he put into what he was doing. Isabel Mullen, 7 News. The heartbroken parents of a Gold Coast teenager left to die hope to find justice. Two police officers are now facing criminal charges after Charlie Robertson was found unconscious. They were charged two weeks ago, nearly five years after his death. Charlie Robertson's final moments. <laughs> Unconscious in bed inside a Nobby Beach unit. Seven police officers were there in June 2015. They pinched him, rubbed his sternum, lifted the mattress. Well, he's breathing. He's snoring. Yeah, but he's... Police left after the drug raid. 19-year-old Charlie never woke up. An ambulance was never called. They walked away from our unconscious son and left him for dead. An inquest in 2017 found police acted inappropriately, inadequately. Three years on, two weeks ago, Grant Watkins and Blake Sullivan were stood down. The two senior constables charged with perjury and common assault. It's nearly five years since we lost our wonderful son, Charlie. Um, it brings all the anxiety and the pain to the surface. This was the first time the two officers had their case mentioned in court. Neither had to appear, but Charlie's parents still drove up from the Gold Coast vowing to be here for every step in this next legal process. Never give up on your children. Um, I know that my love for Charlie is helping me and giving me strength. And motivation to make change. No police can ever walk away from somebody that is in an unconscious state. That somebody was their son, 
Charlie. Jessica Mummy, 7 News. The National Cabinet has agreed to regularly review social restrictions as planning for the medium to long term begins. But the federal government warns now is not the time to relax rules with the Easter weekend shaping as the most important few days in the fight against COVID-19. The Prime Minister's Easter message, don't turn these holy days into holidays. So this Easter we are staying at home, don't travel, don't go away. And don't engage in the traditional rituals like the extended family gatherings. As well as going off to church and our religious services where we can remember the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for the health of the nation. This in many ways is the most important weekend we may face in the whole course of the virus. Hoping to lock in the gains. Today's daily increase in cases just 96 below 100 for the first time in three weeks. The curve flattening. And if it continues... That gives us the chance to take steps out earlier. What sort of steps and how much earlier? We haven't changed our guidance over the six-month period, but where we can take early steps that are safe, where early steps that are safe then we'll obviously look to do that. It's something that was discussed at today's National Cabinet meeting, but no state leader wants to be the first to move, fearing that easing restrictions too early will have political and human consequences. Look, I'm not in the slightest bit interested in talking about lifting restrictions in South Australia. As the federal government signs a $31 million deal with Victoria's Grey Innovation to manufacture 2,000 ventilators here for ICUs. Available in the coming weeks for distribution right across Australia. Taking ventilator numbers to about 7,000 by July. Good news at a testing time. I do wish you a happy Easter, Australia. Mark Riley. 7 News. Officers dressed in hazmat suits have boarded the Ruby Princess during a search for evidence. 15 coronavirus deaths and 600 cases have been linked to the ship, prompting the New South Wales coroner to order an investigation. The ship's crew members and the captain have been interviewed. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson is tonight said to be feeling a lot better, sitting up in bed, but still in intensive care. He won't attend a special lockdown summit that will decide how long restrictions on movement will remain in place across the UK. Above an empty Piccadilly circus, they're showing the Queen's message of hope as her Prime Minister remains in intensive care. Boris Johnson nearly a fortnight into his fight with COVID-19, a fight his colleagues believe he's winning. He has been sitting up in bed and engaging positively with the clinical team. Surviving coronavirus is seen as an achievement worth celebrating. <laughs> Hilton Murray Phillipson spent 12 days in hospital, five days in intensive care on a ventilator. After sort of four days of this, you do begin to doubt whether you can go on, you know, how much longer you can take it. So many in the UK are not surviving. 938 people died from the virus in the UK in the last 24 hours. The deadliest day so far, even worse than Italy at its peak. While Boris Johnson remains in hospital here, the job of government continues just across the River Thames and key calls are coming up. Is the lockdown strategy working here and when will it be lifted? From the World Health Organisation... No is not the time to relax measures. The royals are trying to show the UK that work needs to change. Shifting duties online, calling children of frontline workers who are still at school. What have you been doing? Oh, wow, look at that. Look at the flowers, they're brilliant. Wow, that's brilliant. Is that a little handbag? No. <laughs> What's that? It's a Easter bag. Oh, is it Easter bag? Smiles and the certainty of the royals in an ever-changing world. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. Church services across South East Queensland will look very different this Easter. Instead of switching off, congregations are going online and reaching out to those needing hope. At the oldest Catholic church in Queensland, doors closed, cameras on. A religious holiday celebrated for millennia, moving online. We have uh, our live streaming cameras that uh, you often uh, struggle to work out which camera to look at. So that's an entirely different skill. At St John's Cathedral in Brisbane City, instead of hundreds, there'll be a handful of people. Good Friday services will be streamed at 3pm. So we find ourselves imagining them being present, but it's a very different 
sort of energy. Many New Age churches already use technology to connect. But all places of worship were forced to go entirely online three weeks ago. Good practice before the most important Christian holiday of the year. While the service is important, the social aspect of church is too. Some congregations are even using conference call app Zoom to stay connected. Come and meet us for our final Easter online prayer gathering. Comfort for some. They're able to be back in this space. We're giving them something that's familiar. It is their bedrock. And for many people, it's like a lifeline. In a world of change. Georgie Chumley, 7 News. George Pell's new life. What next for the Cardinal after being freed from a Victorian prison? Australians arrive home from the islands devastated by Cyclone Harold. The world's rich list revealed the eye-watering amount Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is worth. And before the weather, check your insurance policies now. How work-from-home families can save hundreds of dollars. Seven News, brought to you by Industry Supervisors. There's only one thing to look for. Choose a super fund with this symbol. We're all in this together. Easter is upon us and boy, it's uh, certainly going to be a different way to celebrate Easter than we're used to. Make sure you spread the love. Spread heaps and heaps of love. But whatever you do, make sure you keep the Easter eggs to yourself. Share the Easter spirit, but don't share my chocolate. Remember, we're going to get through this. We are all in this together. You are not in this alone. Take good care of yourselves. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Join the millions of people who only use the number one address in property, realestate.com.au. Dan's award-winning series, Bloom, returns. Forever is a very long time if it's without the one you love. The brand new season of the Stan original series, Bloom. Now streaming only on Stan. Since Dyson invented this cordless vacuum format, they've improved it relentlessly. Now, they've gone big. Its cleaner head is 25% wider for faster deep cleaning and dynamic load sensing technology that intelligently adapts to different floor types to optimize power and runtime. Plus a bin that's 150% larger, so you can clean more before emptying. Only a Dyson works like a Dyson. Come and see. Our finest lint chocolate is ready for Easter in a very special shape. You can recognize even with your eyes closed. Because of the bow. The Lindt Gold Bunny is back in store, but you'll have to be quick to catch him. Performance you've never seen before. Safety you've never seen before. This is the SUV you've never seen before. The all-new MG HS. JB's got the hottest deals to keep you connected. Like 200 bucks off the latest Samsung Galaxy S25 D phone. This Acer 3 laptop for $11.99. And 40% off Sony headphones. Buy in-store, online, click and collect, or get it delivered. JB, you've done it again. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? Cardinal George Pell is back in Sydney following his release from a Victorian prison, arriving last night at the seminary of the Good Shepherd in the city's west after a 10-hour drive from Melbourne. It's unclear whether the 78-year-old former Sydney Archbishop intends to stay there permanently. Cyclone Harold is tonight battering Tonga after carving a trail of destruction through Fiji, Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands. Australian aid is arriving in some Pacific nations as our citizens are brought home. Cyclone Harold's anger began in the Solomon Islands. Vanuatu was next. Australian humanitarian aid is beginning to arrive. I've travelled up to Luganville this afternoon to check on some of our Australian citizens. There's been destruction all round. 
The damage here is quite significant. Uh, all the trees are down around the city. The home of former Gold Coast fireman, now Vanuatu resident Alan Harper, is safe. The same couldn't be said for his neighbours. Took an hour to walk, what'd you say, 600 metres along the road to check on their neighbour. The struggle now, assessing the basics of life. We have a lot to do now. Is Currently there's no water. The village is on the island. They're just gone. 100 Australians were flown home this afternoon in a joint US-Australian aid flight. With face masks in place, they were bussed to a city hotel. Those here at the Marriott Hotel are reported to be in high spirits. They'll be held here in quarantine for the next 14 days. A lot of those people are anxious, they're nervous, they're going home, they're forced to go home. Harold eased for a while, but has smashed into Fiji, causing widespread flooding. We stand ready to provide what further help we can to our Pacific family in whatever ways we can. Harold intensified again this morning. Now Tonga is under attack from the Category 5 system. Steve Titmus, 7 News. A key figure in the impeachment... The Widowmaker. They thought... At home, staying safe at the moment, and let's sit for a moment. In this bowl, I've got some flour, just plain flour. It's a case of mixing the three components together. Cold first, and then the hot ingredients. Good. I'm just going to let that cool down, pop it onto the tray. Most kept socially distant. A bouncer controlled crowds on the pontoon. On the Sunshine Coast, lines were long too. Malulabar Fish Market kept customers outside, picking products off a TV screen. For now, this is the way we have to do things. In Brisbane, pop-up markets were a hit, so too were seafood stores setting up ropes and signs to keep customers at bay. By the time we get to the front of the line, there might be two sardines left. At big supermarkets, bollards and security guards limited those in store, seafood and chocolate topping the shopping list. This year, Cadbury's sales are up. 300 million Easter eggs, 12 million bunnies. COVID-19 seemingly not a deterrent for the Easter food rush. Understandably, plenty of people are also avoiding Easter queues this year, opting for home delivery instead. QFB has dropped off 1.8 tonnes of fruit and veg just in the last two weeks. This week's been especially busy coming into Easter. Lots of seafood, uh, lot, lots of uh, meat for the weekend. All to eat at home. Tristan Voorhees, 7 News. The coronavirus crisis is making Brisbane businesses think creatively to stay afloat. When work dwindled for staff at Get Parked, they linked up with the Brisbane Distillery as they diversified from producing gin to making sta hand sanitizer. For us as a company, survival is important, but once we realised we had that piece in hand, it was really important that we could work, we could look around and look up and see who we could help. A pop-up drive-through sanitizer store saw plenty of buyers at Wool and Gather today. There's guarded hope in the United States tonight with new modelling showing the country's coronavirus death toll will be lower than forecast, but the numbers remain confronting. The state of New York alone has more confirmed cases than any country outside America. Abandoned, now evacuated. Elderly residents escorted from their California nursing home after the staff paid to care for them didn't show up for days. Across the country in New York, a glimmer of hope on its darkest day. The curve is flattening, but the death toll still soaring. Highest single day death toll yet 779 people. People infected weeks ago before social distancing. We have to beat it back not open the door again too early. New models project fewer Americans will die from coronavirus than some of the bleakest estimates. We're hopefully uh, heading toward a final stretch, the light at the end of the tunnel. The president blaming the World Health Organization for a slow start. Today, it fired back. If you don't want many more body bugs, then you refrain from politicising it. This virus has impacted every facet of American life, including the election. The November poll expected to be a referendum on Donald Trump's handling of this crisis. Today, it became a two-horse race. I cannot, in good conscience, continue to mount a campaign that cannot win. Bernie Sanders paving the way for Joe Biden's nomination. Standing united 
We will go forward to defeat Donald Trump. In New York, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. Kindness costs nothing, but it goes a long way in lifting spirits during this tough time. Here's Kendall Gilding with tonight's Acts of Kindness. Social distancing will make Easter a little different this year, but the Easter Bunny still has a spring in his step. He hopped on a cherry picker at this Sunshine Coast retirement home to make sure even the most isolated residents didn't feel alone. Queensland Parliament has opened up their kitchen and offered up their chefs to help provide meals for parents with critically ill children in hospital. The Scarlet May Foundation has doubled their food output due to COVID-19. The RSPCA has gone digital in an effort to fundraise while its centres are closed. For a small donation, owners could get a portrait of their pet. There was no promise the pictures would be done by a professional, so the results were hilarious. It raised almost $5,000. And Aussie actress Rebecca Gibney's rallied some famous friends to help spread a little love. love is in the air. Well, keep the love coming. You can share your acts of kindness on our Facebook page. Thanks, Kendall. The federal government's JobKeeper package has passed the parliament. Next, details on when the payments will begin and how it will impact businesses and workers. See where we're spending our big and alarming trend exposed as government cash hits bank accounts. And how families are saving on insurance while working from home. Lamb, the Aussie favourite, reinvented. Fast Ed's simple secret to add massive flavour. Really, really straightforward. And with the nation spending more time in the backyard, we've got easy ways to make it the coolest place to hang out. New Better Homes, Friday. Bread is a part of life, so why not make life poppier, crustier, pumpkinier, down to the very last crumb. Abbott's Village Bakery. Every bit better. This Easter, enjoy Ferrero Rocher. A whole hazelnut, creamy chocolate, crisp wafer and roasted hazelnut pieces. Unwrap Easter with Ferrero Rocher. Hello, I'm Dr Jeanette Young. Queensland is well prepared to deal with the coronavirus. We are tripling emergency department capacity and doubling the number of ICU beds. We're enlisting extra doctors and nurses, boosting telehealth and buying more equipment. As part of our response, we also need to postpone some work. You may need to wait longer for procedures and appointments that aren't urgent to clear a path for Queenslanders who need emergency care. You can help by following the latest advice about social distancing to protect yourself and your loved ones. Stay home when you can and save lives. If we all work together, we will slow the spread. Thank you. Authorised by the Queensland Government, Brisbane. Right now at Target, get 20% off toys from these big brands like Lego, Nerf, Barbie, Fisher-Price and more. Now on at Target. Offer ends April 26 in selected stores and online. Conditions apply. When the weekend arrives, the real work begins. The kind that takes muscle, versatility or an easier way. So I close the deal on a tough little workhorse. And we get the job done. Reason. From the moment we're born, we're conditioned to find it. Why does it feel good to dance? Why are we drawn to the water? We're consumed by a need for explanation. But some things just defy rational sense. When you move beyond what's known and into what's felt, you don't need a reason. To finance and the Australian share market has closed at a one-month high following a surge in late trading. The ASX 200 added 180 points, up 3.4%. Electronics retailer JB Hi-Fi added $2.27. The Australian dollar remains steady, buying 61 US cents and 49 pence. And fuel prices are still dropping. The average cost of unleaded is $1.08 in Brisbane and on the Gold Coast. 
New data suggests the first round of stimulus is working. We are spending, just maybe not where the government would have hoped. In the last week, spending online gambling shot up 67%. We're spending an extra 64% on home improvement materials, 63% on food delivery. There are the obvious areas going down. In one week, spending on gyms and fitness plummeted by 95%. Travel and public transport is also down 78%. Now that the government's JobKeeper package has passed into law, many bosses and workers are wondering who qualifies and where's the money. There's a lot of it, $130 billion, but it won't start flowing until early next month. The fight against COVID-19 may one day produce bestsellers. Until then, bookshop owner David Gaunt hopes he can survive. We, like a lot of other small businesses, will be in huge trouble because we've got no income. It's a closed store, now using online sales and book deliveries, including by bicycle. Some still at work, but most staff are home, sweating on the JobKeeper subsidy. Businesses will be able to stay open, which means that workers like myself are going to be able to come back to a job at the end of this. JobKeeper will pay $1,500 a fortnight for six months to an estimated six million workers is so fast evolving. I think the approach taken has been that they've had to uh, uh, really jump off the cliff and build the aeroplane on the way down. Leaving confusion over the rules, particularly for casual workers. Businesses like Despagna employing foreign students on working visas. Um, we do have some staff that have been here for more than 12 months. However, because of their visa, they don't qualify for the job keeper. But what's in the fine print for JobKeeper that has small business concerned? In particular, when do the payments start and can they hold on that long? Not till next month at the earliest. Then it's how long will the virus last? Six months will, will, will do us in for sure. Chris Meyer, 7 News. As if bars and restaurants haven't had a hard enough time, Meek Social House at Woolloongabba had its fresh food delivery for the Easter long weekend stolen this morning. When you put it into context, that $250 that we've lost today could have gone into around 10 hours. We could have given back to one of our 11 casual workers that we've had to let go over the last two weeks. The business was able to get extra supplies. It'll be delivering takeaway meals all weekend. Coming up, Queensland's care army is booming. The astounding number of people signing up. And working from home can save you hundreds in insurance. The expert advice. Time now for sport and there's talk. The footy's coming back, Pat. Fingers crossed, Sharon. Yes, hello ahead. We'll have more of the NRL's planned restart date, but there's tough news for league's grassroots. Family first for Mark Leishman as COVID-19 revives bitter memories. And thankfully, it's virtual racing. Otherwise, the damages bill would have been eye-watering. The Widowmaker. They thought... Follow me. The biggest challenge they'd ever faced was finished. There's no door. But behind this wall is the biggest surprise of their lives. TV's most inspiring reveals. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. House Rules, next on set. Home for Easter means funs and fun. All day to play. Keeping fit. Everyone doing their bit. Hidden places and smiling faces. It also means hot cross buns, four to nine pack varieties, excludes brioche and free from gluten. Now just $3 each, save 50 cents. And fresh cooked large Aussie tiger prawns. Now just $27 a kilo, save $3 a kilo. This year, more than ever, have a safe and happy Easter. This Easter, enjoy classic Ferrero Rocher. And now with fragrant hazelnuts and delicious chocolate, a unique specialty is created. Introducing the Ferrero Rocher Golden Squirrel. Unwrap Easter with Ferrero Rocher. Keith? Play now in-store at thelot.com or on the Lot app. 
At Harvey Norman, our spacious stores are open this Easter with our team practicing social distancing to keep our community safe. Shop for fridges, freezers, washers, air purifiers, laptops, Wi-Fi, headphones, home office accessories, mattresses and sofa beds. Until Easter Monday only, take advantage of 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card. Visit us in store or shop online from home with both click and collect and delivery available at Harvey Norman. Wishing you all a happy and safe Easter. Just a few weeks ago, confirmed cases of coronavirus doubled every three days. But by restricting travel, keeping our distance and staying at home, we're slowing the spread and saving lives. Sadly, some people aren't getting the message, putting us all at risk. Putting your life on hold for now is hard. Dealing with coronavirus is harder. Download the app. Visit australia.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Hi folks, older Aussies and those living with disability are finding it really tough to even get the basics. So IGA set up a home delivery service for locals in need to get their essentials. Register online so IGA can come to you. As you've heard, Rugby League's power brokers are aiming for an ambitious May 28 restart to the season. The details are still sketchy, but it's planned for a full Origin series and one grand final in Sydney. The Commission boss is confident it will happen. And the proof's in the pudding. Not one NRL player at the moment has um, proved positive to the coronavirus with the isolation measures that are in place at the moment. And they'll be more strict when we start playing, so I think the risk will actually be less. Queensland clubs are tonight receiving a full briefing on the plans. But the pain continues for Rugby League's grassroots. The Q Cup's already been cancelled. Today, the clubs were told their NRL funding dries up at the end of April. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a, it's a tough day, mate. We're obviously all been preparing for the worst over the last couple of weeks. We're going to have to make some tough calls. Tough calls mean staff cuts at every Intrust Super Club, and there is bitterness. As we've all seen over the last couple of weeks, the overspending at the top is certainly hurting, um, you know, the clubs like ours uh, down the bottom. Flannery, a former Maroon star, insists the Falcons will survive. Sports global lockdown in early April is bittersweet for Australia's Mark Leishman. Like the rest of golf's elite, he should be at the Masters. Instead, Leishman's in the US, jealously guarding those he loves most. Tucked safely away at home, still Leishman is Augusta dreaming. Famously, he was Adam Scott's playing partner as his great mate snapped the Aussie jinx in 2013. One of those things where you, um, you, know, you wish it was you, but if it's not you, that's who I wanted it to be. It's also the tournament he walked away from as wife Audrey fought acute respiratory disorder syndrome. Yesterday marked five years since she emerged from a coma. Audrey's already had ARDS, which is what... Uh, for lack of a better word, what kills you when you when you do get the COVID-19. So he's holding Audrey close right now, but he admits there is a restlessness. I guess you don't really realise how much you, you love it until it's taken away from you. Particularly when you and so many of Australia's golfing nobility made such a brilliant start to 2020. Scott won, so did Cameron Smith and Lucas Herbert and Wade Ormsby. Then the virus struck. I would much prefer to have done that than had a poor start to the year and then have to worry about trying to fight back. With a new schedule and the Masters not done until mid-November, Leishman's still keen to return for Australia's Open and the PGA. And as long as there's no two-week quarantine to, to go back, I'd, I'd love to be there. Australian Open organisers are desperate for Tiger Woods to join him at Kingston Heath. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I'll have to have a chat to him and... Tell him how good the course is. In the interim, it's family indulging his passion for mowing and nurturing the budding behemoth that is Leishman Lager. Former Test cricketer Gavin Robinson's opened up on his battle with brain cancer. The 53-year-old's had radiation and chemotherapy since emergency surgery last May to remove the tumour. He's leaning on family and his best mate Steve Waugh, whose wife Lynette had brain surgery in 2006. Lynette really talked about the shock of it happening you're in for an operation and then you're in hopeful recovery. And then it's about, you know, how, how can I be positive? What's the first thing the doctor wants me to do and how can I do that well? The one-time test spinner is still working a couple of days a week on Sydney radio. Jockey Tim Clark is eyeing the biggest win of his career on day two of the championships at Randwick. Clark will ride the Hawks trained master of wine in the $2 million Queen Elizabeth Stakes. He's got a bit of an X factor about him and he's returning awesome form this time in. Um, a step up for him, he's taking on the, the big boys and girls. 
The Queen Elizabeth, which captained Winx's career last season, is the highlight of four Group 1 races on the card. Seven's live and free coverage begins at 11.30 Saturday morning. Supercars champion Scott McLaughlin is just as impressive in the simulator as he is on the track. It was a dramatic opening to the Supercars E-Series as drivers got used to racing from their living rooms. When they switched to Monza in Italy, there was carnage. Fortunately, in this racing, there are no injuries and no panel beating. McLaughlin won two of the three events. I had so much fun today. I really think this is going to be cool and it's a good interim thing that we can do in the, in, you know, in the meantime while we wait for our real racing again. To celebrate, the Kiwi sprayed champagne from his Brisbane balcony. And why not? It was fun. Indeed. It's very good. Um, and also, we must congratulate you on 45 years with the Seven Network. That's quite an achievement. You must be a legend now with a capital L. Uh, that's <laughs> what I tell Sess, yes, at home. <laughs> she doesn't seem to believe it. Well, it's a fantastic achievement. Well <laughs> Thank done, <you>. Patty. <laughs> The Premier's call went out and Queenslanders have answered in droves. The state's care army has been inundated with volunteers, registering to help our seniors locked in isolation. In these difficult days, it's the little things that make a big difference. Pharmacy workers putting the finishing touches on care packages for elderly customers in isolation. Within the first 24 hours of launching it, we had um, over 100 people log on and nominate someone that they care about. Personalised with a handwritten note and delivered to their front door. I think it's really important during these times that we stay connected, but also for our elderly to know that they can reach out. It's these acts of kindness the state government is encouraging. Since the Premier put the call out at the beginning of the month, more than 21,000 people have registered for Queensland's Care Army, making it four times larger than the New Zealand Army. This, of course, is on top of all the Queenslanders out there that are doing acts of kindness in their local community, supporting family, friends and neighbours. So far, the number of Queenslanders putting up their hand to help far outweighs the number of calls to government departments for assistance. As the crisis continues, that number is expected to grow as seniors spend more time separated from their family. Hello, we Skype, but we do miss seeing them personally. Letting loved ones know we're still here. Elliot Chipper, 7 News. With thousands of families now working from home, does it affect your insurance? One mum found the answers with advice on saving from content to the car if you're now stuck at home. And it looks as though we are set to see a couple of overnight showers before clearing just in time for these. The weekend, all the details after the break. They thought... Follow me. The biggest challenge they'd ever faced was finished. There's no door. But behind this wall is the biggest surprise of their lives. House Rules, next on 7. Street life, huh? Some are hairy. This is definitely because you're here. Some are scary. But there's no one quite like Mary. There's a bit of Disney Plus in all of us. Today, your information is more exposed than ever. You could be vulnerable to cyber criminals. That's why Norton 360 provides multiple layers of protection. Get Norton 360. Go to au.norton.com for special offers. Terms apply. In a world full of flavour, don't let your denture leave you with bad breath. Try new Polydent Cleansing Wipes, our quickest and easiest way to refresh your denture for that super fresh feeling, at home or out and about. At Terry White Chem Mart, we're more than just open. We're open to helping any way we can. Like offering the safety and convenience of home delivery. Terry White Chem Mart. Now that's real chemistry. Everyone knows Volkswagen drivers expect a little more. And with per week pricing, why wouldn't they? Volkswagen. Discover your connections to the men and women who served our country. Learn how old they were and the battles they fought. Connect with the people and places that led to you. 
Start searching for free at ancestry.com.au. Home for Easter means funs and fun all day to play, keeping fit, everyone doing their bit, hidden places and smiling faces. It also means hot cross buns, four to nine pack varieties, excludes brioche and free from gluten, now just $3 each, save 50 cents. And fresh cooked large Aussie tiger prawns, now just $27 a kilo, save $3 a kilo. This year, more than ever, have a safe and happy Easter. Home and Away will be taking a short break, but you can still catch up with the Bay on 7 Plus, thanks to Subaru. Streaming now, all for free. Making news tonight, an alleged carjacker has been shot multiple times by police after lunging at an officer with a knife in Oxley. Evictions will be prohibited for renters and land taxes waived for landlords for those struggling financially. And police are already cracking down on Queenslanders travelling out of town for the Easter weekend. With millions of Australians now working from home, there are many more watchful eyes over our homes and their contents. It's prompting customers to ask if they should be getting a better deal for their insurance on their bricks and mortar and what they keep in the garage. Mum Kelly Smith has had to swap studying childhood education for the real thing, minding her kids during the pandemic. Now at home full time, Kelly wondered if she should be paying her insurer less. They should be decreasing the prices now that we're at home and it's a lot safer. Makes sense, but unfortunately... Working from home shouldn't affect your home and contents policy. Your policy shouldn't be affected, but check your work equipment is covered and tell your insurer if you have friends or family staying or if you're stuck in quarantine. There are still savings to be made. Just ask cleaner Melina Graham. Working from home and same, same property, same area, Nothing has really changed except changing providers at this time of the year. I uh, saved $350. A comparison of 10 home and contents insurers saw Budget Direct coming out on top with an annual premium of just over $1,000. ING and NRMA were similarly priced. QBE was the most expensive at more than $1,500. With many household budgets under pressure and many of our habits changing, now's the time to look for savings across all your policies. We're all using our cars very differently now. They're garaged, we're driving a lot less. So now is the time to compare and see if there are savings out there for you. Whether it's car or home, it pays to be COVID covered. Gemma Acton, 7 News. Well, with the long weekend upon us, let's check the weather now and how's it looking, Bertie? Well, Sharon, not too bad. We've had a couple of sprinkles just pushing through around the Gold Coast at the moment, heading up towards Bayside. And so in the next couple of hours, we'll see a few more showers popping through. But uh, by Saturday, that'll all clear away. Let's take a look at today's temperatures, where it got to a high of around 26 degrees across most coastal regions. 27 for the Gold Coast, Logan, and in the city, 28 for Ipswich. Satellite shows an inland trough system bringing storms and showers through Victoria, southern New South Wales as it's make its way through towards the east coast. A high centred over the Tasmania, bringing stable weather to the Apple Isle. Tomorrow, that high will shift northeast, And, of course, that's what's going to bring us some clearer conditions over the weekend. There's another high pushing in from the central interior. A cooler but clear day for Easter Sunday. Capitals, shower two for Sydney, 17 to 22. Also Canberra, possible storm there, top of 19. Partly cloudy for Melbourne and Hobart. Fine and hot per 36. Far north, mostly sunny in the tropics, uh, 22 to 30 for Cairns and Townsville, 29 for Mackay. Further south, mostly sunny also for Rocky, 21 to 28. 31 for Emerald, partly cloudy Harvey Bay. Toowoomba, 15 to 24 on the range. Good evening up there. Back home, coastal shower at 2 mid-morning, high of 27 Gold Coast Bayside, 26 for Redcliffe and Sunshine Coast, down to 19 to 20 tonight, uh, similar for Caboolture and Logan, 18 to 28 for Ipswich. Now, if you're going for a walk along the foreshores, east turning northerly winds, 15 knots, uh, Bay sees about a metre, high tides around 11 in the morning. In the city, 20 to 27 degrees with a morning shower to just a few millimetres here and there, mostly coastal. 
Uh, ahead, partly cloudy on Saturday, 20 to 31. Cool and clear Easter Sunday, 18 to 26. Mostly sunny Monday, 15 to 27. Ipswich, partly cloudy Saturday, 18 to 31. Cool for uh, Sunday, Easter, 16 to 28. Mostly sunny on Monday, 28 as well. Gold Coast, partly cloudy Saturday, 18 to 30. Cool and clear for Easter Sunday, 25. Mostly sunny on Monday as well. And the Sunshine Coast, partly cloudy Saturday, 19 to 30. Cool and clear Easter Sunday, 18 to 25 and mostly sunny Monday and 26. Now, team, if anyone's buying seafood tomorrow, just be patient, stand in line, stay away from one another. It will take a lot longer, but be patient. All right, thank you, Bertie. And that is all from us this Thursday. Thanks for your company. The latest from 7 News will keep you up to date from 10 tonight. From all the team, enjoy the Easter long weekend. Stay home and have a good night. Good night.